Frederick, from today, you rank as a full-blown member of our band. Hey! My friends, I thank you all from my heart for your kind wishes. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Well, today I am out of my indentures, and today I, I leave you forever. What? But this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuffling a cunard or cutting out a P and O never shipped a hand spike. Hey! Yes, I did my best for you. And why? Because it was my duty under my indentures. And I am the slave of duty. Oh. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band, and it was through an error. No matter, the mistake was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I dare not say, for it would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> Apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy, apprentice to a pirate. <gasps> a sad mistake it was to make to doom him to a vile lot. I bound him to a pirate, you, instead of to a pilot. You see how it came about? Your own mother could have made the same mistake. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. Now, a nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of this shy lot, which you wouldn't have found had he been bound, yes, apprentice to a pilot. Oh. Right, sweet one, I've long since pardoned you. The two words were so much alike, you see. They were. Yes. They still are. Oh. Though years have rolled over their heads. Oh, my word, yes. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. <laughs> but collectively, I... I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, yeah. oh, pity me, beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor lad. Poor lad. Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. Well, I do know why, but alas, I cannot tell you. It, it would not be right. Why not? It's only, 
Half past 11. And you're one of us until the clock strikes 12. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, it's my duty as a pirate to tell you that you're too tender-hearted. For instance, you make it a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger one, you invariably get thrashed. There's some truth in that. Then again, you make it a point of never molesting an orphan. But of course, we are orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. <laughs> the last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. And so we let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile fleet was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, and we know this is not the case. But hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. Well, there's my problem. Until 12 o'clock, I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Oh, was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and it was won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What's to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. <laughs> well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It, it's true I admire you very much, but I've been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and... Yours is the only woman's face I've seen in that time. I, I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I've never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, I just may be mistaken. True. Oh, what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person to find out that she is, on the whole, plain. Oh, Ruth is very well. Very well, indeed. Oh, yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Do you think so? Oh, I do. Well, then, I will not be so selfish as to take her with me. In justice to her and in consideration for you, I will leave her behind. Uh, no, Frederick. <laughs> this must not be. No, we are rough men who lead a rough life, but we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. No, I think I'm right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. No, Frederick, keep thy love. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide and we must be off. Frederick, farewell. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Oh, would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. <laughs> no, Frederick. It cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick. I shall live and die A pirate king! <laughs>
fleet of few more ships, it's true, than the well bred Mahana got to do. But many a king on a first class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, <laughs> must manage somehow to get through more dirty. quite candid with you. You're very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you're considerably older than I am, and a lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, I will find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Oh. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve. Yes. Compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, Master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I'm quite well. Well, I am sorry for your cold. Thank you, yes. But I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you... Are you beautiful? Well, I have been told so, dear Master, yes. Ah, but lately? Oh, no, years and years ago. Well, what do you think of yourself? Uh, 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 that's a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. And that is your candid opinion? Oh, yes. I'd be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I know you would not practice upon my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing, and if... Yes? I say, if you are truly a fine woman, then your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Oh. Oh. Surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be the Coast Guard? No, it does not sound like the Coast Guard. Confusion. It is the voices of young girls, and if he sees them, I am lost. My oh, that's marvelous. A bevy of beautiful young maidens. Lost, lost. How lovely. How surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceive me. Since you play, I'm not the one to talk so. Your face is lined, your hair is gray. Glad you are not so. Faithless woman, to deceive me, I who trusted so. Master, master, do not leave me here.
this woman to deceive me. I trust it so. Faithless woman to deceive me. I trust it so. What shall I do before these gentle maidens? I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. I wonder where Papa is. 
We've left him ever so far behind. Oh, he'll be along presently. Remember, poor oh. Papa is not as young as we are. <laughs> and we have come over rather difficult country. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone. Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings who have ever set foot on this enchanting spot. Except for the mermaids. This is the perfect place for mermaids. Who are only human beings down to the waist. And who can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. Tails they may, but feet they cannot. <laughs> but what shall we do until Papa and the servants arrive with the luncheon? Well, we are quite alone. And the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes <laughs> and stockings and paddle! Stop, ladies, pray. Okay. I had not intended to intrude upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But I feel it is my bounden duty to tell you that your proceedings here will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir, speak? I am a pirate. A pirate pirate! <laughs> Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vow profession. And to that end, oh, pure and peerless maidens, O oh, blushing buds of ever-blooming beauty, I saw it hot, I saw it hot, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale, how rare his beauty, how pitiful
to such a one if such there be i swear by heaven's arch above you if you will cast your eyes on me how
vegetable and animal and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the pints historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. Ooh, lot of news, lot of news. <laughs> Got it. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. <laughs> Calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and in calculus. In short, it matters vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> I know I'm mythic history, king, authors, and sir paradox. I answer hard acrostics, I have a pretty tasteful paradox. I quote in elegiacs all the kinds of heliogabalus. In colleagues, I can draw peculiarities and analysis. I can tell on down to Raphael, so tell on thousands of the knees. I know the croaking calls from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a few Oh, dinner four, dinner four. Got it. And whistle all the airs from that inferno now says dinner four. Then I can write a washing bill in Babylonic uniform and tell you every detail of character because his uniform is only that is better to double animal and mineral. I am the very model of a modern nature When I know what is meant by Mamelon and Ravelin, when I can tell at sight a mouse a rifle from a javelin, when such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat, when I have learned what progress has been made in modern gallery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy, Oh, I said a hard one in strategy. <laughs> Got it. You'll say a better major general has never strategy. <laughs>
I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. <laughs> but we waive that point. We do not press it. We look over it. An idea. And do you mean to say, I said, do you mean to say that you would rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age, and leave me to go through the remainder of my life, unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Here we are again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. Now, as I understand you, you're merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Oh, pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeat it! But not often! lost his parents, or often, frequently. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I beg pardon, I see what you mean. <laughs> frequently. Yeah, you said often, frequently. <laughs> no, only once. <laughs> but say yes, you said often, frequently, only once. dismal fate, forgo your cruel employ, have pity on my lonely state, I am an orphan boy, <laughs> an, an orphan boy, an orphan boy,
Cannot you, in the calm excellence of your wisdom, reconcile it with your conscience to say something that will ease my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel, but why does he sit here night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? <laughs> why do I sit here, Frederick? Frederick, in order to escape from the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I, I, I come here, here, to, to humble myself among the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor upon the family escutcheon. <laughs> but you forget, sir, you, you only bought the property a year ago. And the stucco in your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel, our ancestors, you cannot deny that. With the estate, I purchased the chapel and its contents. I, I, I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder, I, I, I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, <laughs> should have brought dishonor upon what I have no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. Oh, 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 no. Well, be comforted, sir. <laughs> For had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would most assuredly have called in the nearest clergyman and and married your large family on the spot. Yes, I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing, I tell you, Frederick. Such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood with which I escaped these easily deluded pirates that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all. Did I not feel that the consequences would be... Ooh. Oh, I say, oh, oh, most disastrous, most disastrous to myself. At what hour does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my order. 
Then, Frederick, let your escort lion-hearted be summoned to receive a general's blessing ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. To great distress on the risks that on us press, and of reference a lack to our chance of coming back. Still, perhaps it would be wise not to cough or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are were meant. Yes, perhaps it would be wise not to cough or criticize, for it's very evident these attentions are were meant. Yes, it's very evident.
take measure for the repeated acts of theft and pillage, of which at a sense of duty stern dictation, I, circumstances victim, have been guilty. Young Frederick, who called your late commander. And I, your little Ruth. Oh, mad intruders, how dare you face me? No, we not, oh, rash ones, that I have doomed you to extermination. Have mercy on us. Hear us ere you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet mercy should alloy our stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. <laughs> Say on. we heard we lay and sobbed upon the rocks until to somebody occurred a startling paradox paradox a paradox a most ingenious paradox with quips and quibbles heard in flocks but not to beat this paradox a paradox a paradox a, paradox, a most ingenious paradox <laughs> Your taste for curious quips, for cranks and contradictions queer. And with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we've risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox, that, paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles, heard in flocks, but can to beat this paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> a paradox. For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I've no desire to be disloyal, some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the astronomer royal, has decided that, although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. Through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> Comments and she gaily mocks. Though counting in the usual way is 21, I've been alive. <laughs> Yet reckoning by my natal day. <laughs> Yet reckoning by my natal day. I am a little boy of five. He's a little boy of five. <laughs>
Michael. Five and a quarter, eh? <laughs> you wouldn't think it to look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be glad now I'll be bound that you spared us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered that you'd killed two of your comrades. My comrades? Mm. I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Yes, until I reached my 21st year. No, 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 no. Until you reached your 21st birthday. <laughs> and going by birthdays, you are as yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> 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 but you don't mean to say you're going to hold me to this. No, 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 no! You merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty! <laughs> well, don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist upon the letter of your bond just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We are content in pointing out to you your duty. Your duty! <laughs> You've appealed to my sense of duty. And my duty is only too clear. Oh, I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought I've ever been mixed up with it. But duty is before all. And at any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. <laughs> My awful situation, I shall go at once to Mabel Lamb or make a renovation. I will tell her I am Baba Duty and my moral senses, and I don't know what to do about the pending consequences. Now I do not want to perish by the sword or by the dagger, but a pirate must indulge a little part in our swagger. And a word or two of compliment, my vanity would flatter, but I've got to go tonight, and so it really doesn't matter. Oh, it really doesn't matter. Oh, it really doesn't matter. Oh, it really doesn't matter. So 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 it really doesn't matter. Upon the subject willy really nilly, I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question, and you'd really be astonished at the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I should write you almost value on the letter full of excellent suggestions when I feel a little better. But at present, I'm afraid I'm as mad as any hatter, so I'll sing this song for bloody God, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Have a steady mother who could talk to me as we are talking now to one another. Who could give me good advice when she discovered I was flirting, which is just a very favor which on you I am conferring. My existence would have made a rather interesting idol, and I might have been the night of any decent in the light of this particularly rapid, unintelligible pattern isn't generally heard. And if it is, it doesn't matter. If it is, it Yet as one of your band. Speak out! I charge you by the test of conscientiousness, which we have never yet appealed in vain. <laughs> General Stanley. Yes. The father of my Mabel. Yes, yes, yes. General Stanley escaped from you on, on the plea that, that he was an orphan. He did! Yes, he did. Well? <laughs> oh, it breaks my heart to betray the honored father of the girl I adore. Break it. <laughs> and yet, as your apprentice, I, I have no alternative. None. <laughs> it is my duty to tell you that General Stanley is no... He is no... He is no. <laughs> Often. What? what? And more than that. <laughs> he never was one. <laughs> Oh, 
Am I to understand <laughs> that in order to save his contemptible life, he dared to practice on our credulous simplicity? just been made. Mabel, my dearly loved one, I've bound myself to serve the pirate captain until I've reached my one and twentieth birthday. But you are twenty-one. Just discovered that I was born in leap year and that birthday will not
I of age shall be I'll then return and claim you I declare it It's been so long Swear that till then you'll be true to me
is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment. or maturing his felonious little plan, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, enjoyment is just as great as any honest man. Honest man. Our feelings we with difficulty smother, when confabulated duties to be done. To be done. I take one consideration with another. With another. I'm is not a happy one. Oh. When the cutthroat is in touch, you hide in crime. He loves to hear the little brook gurgling and listen to the merry village chime. When the cock has finished jumping on his mother, he loves to lie about in the sun. I take one consideration with another. On the man approaching with stealthy steps, the pirates are approaching. We are not coming for plate or gold, the story General Stanley told. We seek a penalty pretty bold for General Stanley's story. They seek a penalty pretty bold, we seek a penalty pretty bold. We seek a penalty pretty bold for General Stanley's story. They come in force with stealthy stride. 
Arabia's course is now too high. a word. <laughs> I see a light inside. The Major General comes so quickly hide. Yes, yes. Shh. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Tormented with the anguished dread of falsehood unattuned, I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who feels his conscience ache 
no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. <laughs> he thought he heard a noise. What? What? No, all is still in Dale on Hill. My mind is set at ease. So still the scene. It must have been the sighing of the <laughs> Softly sighing to the river comes the loving breeze, setting Nature all a quiver rustling through the trees. And the brook with rippling measure laughs for very love. While the poplars in their pleasure wave their arms above. Yes, the trees for very love. But a rover when he wings away. Brook and poplar moon a lover sighing well a day. Well a day. Ah, the doing and undoing that the rover could tell. When the breeze is out a wooing, who can who?
a brief advantage you can try, but your proud triumph will not be long life. Don't say you're orphans, for we know that game. And your allegiance we've a stronger claim. We charge your yield. We charge your yield. Bring Queen Victoria's name. You do. We love. We charge your Accomplished by the dark door of divinity, who happily resides in the immediate vicinity. 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 Nice little to the north, so I'm tacky and adventurous. Has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in getting off my daughters, eight or nine or ten in all, I've shown myself the model of a modern major general. <laughs> 